In this video, we're going to learn how to determine whether a number is prime or not using C. First, we'll talk about what a prime number is, and then we'll talk about how to determine whether a number is prime or not. And then we'll use that to implement a C program that will determine whether a number is prime or not. So first off, what is a prime number? So a prime number or a prime is a natural number greater than one that is not a product of two smaller natural numbers. So the natural numbers are these numbers here, one, two, three, four, five, on upwards forever. They are integer numbers without a decimal place from one on upwards. And we could ask ourselves, is six a prime number? And no, it's not, because two times three gives us six, where two and three are two smaller natural numbers than six. What about seven? Can we multiply any two smaller natural numbers to give us seven? No, we can't. Only one times seven will give us seven. So two times three will give us six. Two times four will give us eight. We can't find two smaller natural numbers than seven to multiply together to give us seven. So we would say seven is a prime number. So how can we determine whether a number is prime or not? We'll talk about some other properties here to give us an algorithm we can use. So the divisors of a natural number X are the natural numbers that divide X evenly. In other words, without a remainder. Every natural number has both one and itself as a divisor. But if it has any other divisor, it cannot be prime. So this gives us a way to search for whether a number is a prime number or not. So for example, if we look at six here, and we take 6 divided by 1, 6 divided by 2, 6 divided by 3, all the way up to 6 divided by 6, we can look at the results. So 6 divided by 1 is 6 remainder 0. 6 divided by 6 is 1 remainder 0. And we're always going to find that the number itself and 1 are divisors of the number. But the numbers in between those numbers are the ones we want to look at. And if there are any divisors here, we're going to say that the number is not a prime number. So here we have 6 divided by 2, where we have 3 remainder 0, and 6 divided by 3, where we have 2 remainder 0. And because we have 2 and 3 as divisors of 6, because when we take 6 and divide it by 3 or divide it by 2, we get a remainder of 0, we would say that 6 is not a prime number. What about seven? So in the case of seven here, we've got seven divided by one, which gives us seven remainder zero. And seven divided by seven gives us one remainder zero. And again, we don't really care about these numbers because we know they're gonna be divisors. But what about the numbers in between, from two up until six? In this case here, we notice that every number in between has a remainder of not zero. It's one or more. And therefore we would say that all of these numbers, two, three, four, five, six, are not divisors of seven. So in this case here, we could say that seven is a prime number. So this is gonna be the key to implement a C program to actually determine whether a number is prime or not. What we can do is take the number and try to divide it by all the numbers between one and the number itself not including one and not including the number itself. And we'll try to see if any of those numbers is a divisor. If one is, then we can say the number is not prime. And if none of them are divisors, then we can say the number is prime. So let's implement this now in C. The first thing we'll do is include a library called stdbool.h. So we'll say include stdbool.h. So this library allows us to use the bool type which is made up of true and false, which means that we can return true or false from our function that's gonna determine whether a number is prime or not. Here we'll say bool is prime int number. So the function is gonna be called is prime. It's gonna accept the number itself as an argument, and it's gonna return true if the number is prime and false if it's not. And we'll copy and paste this, and then we'll provide a definition of the function down here. So the first thing we'll do 
is check to see if the number is less than or equal to one. If that's the case, it cannot be prime. And we know that right away. So we'll say if number is less than or equal to one, return false. And that's because we know that a prime number has to be greater than one. Next, we'll go through and check to see if the number has a divisor between two and every number up to the number, but not including the number itself. So we'll say here for int i is equal to two, i is less than the number i plus plus. So we're taking i from two through every number up to the number itself, but not including the number itself. So we have less than there. So it'll check from two to five, and it'll check from two to six. And that's exactly what we want, because those are exactly the numbers we're interested in checking. Now to check if this number here, i, is a divisor of our number, we're gonna use the modulus operator. So we'll say if number modulus i is equal to zero, we're gonna return false. So the modulus operator is kind of like a special division operator. It does a division of number divided by i, but what it returns is the actual remainder, not the quotient. So it's gonna return the remainder of dividing number by i. And we're gonna check if that's equal to zero. If it is equal to zero, that means that i is a divisor of number because it has no remainder. And if that's the case, we're gonna return false because as we've learned, if the number does have a divisor between two and every number up to the number itself, but not including the number itself, we can say that it's not a prime number. So that's why here we're gonna return false. Now, if we go through all these numbers here and we don't find a divisor, then we know it's prime. Then it looks like this situation here, where we go through all these potential numbers and none of them have a zero remainder. And we've checked all of them here at this point. So then we can return true. So we'll say return true. Now this function should do the trick. Let's test it out. We'll say here, if is prime four, then printf four is prime. Else printf four is not prime. And we'll put a backslash n after these lines here. Now four should not be prime because two times two gives us four. And if we save and run this, we should get that four is not prime. And that's exactly what we get. Let's try our other numbers out. Let's try six and seven. So we'll copy and paste this and we'll try six and seven. We'll check six and we'll report whether six is prime or not. And we'll do the same thing with seven. So we'll check seven too. We'll say seven is prime or seven is not prime. We'll save this and we'll give it a test. And we get six is not prime and seven is prime. So it seems to be working correctly. Now, one thing we can do to actually improve the performance of our code is we can actually substantially reduce the number of divisors that our for loop has to check. Now, this isn't really a problem if we're talking about numbers like six and seven, but if we're talking about a very, very large number and we're checking for a divisor between two and all the numbers up to, but not including that very, very large number, our for loop is doing a lot of work. We'd like to reduce the amount of work that our for loop has to do. It's gonna turn out, we can actually say this, i is less than or equal to number divided by two. And what we're doing here is we're gonna take i up to the midway point. So we're gonna say i is less than or equal to the number divided by two. We're only gonna check up to the midway point between two and the number itself. The reason why we're only gonna go up to the midway point is the divisors 
must be there. Now there's a mathematical proof to show that this is the case. But if we just think about it, it makes sense. If we take a potential divisor that's larger than half the size of our number, almost by definition, it's only going to be able to go into it once. So that's why it makes sense. So this here will sort of optimize our code by only checking half the numbers instead of all of them. And if we save this here and try it out, we'll get the exact same results as before. Now, just for fun, one thing we could do is have a loop in our main function that checks all the numbers between two and let's say 1000 to determine whether they're prime or not. So we'll say here for int i is equal to two, i is less than or equal to 1000, i plus plus, and we'll say if is prime, i is true, then printf percent d is prime backslash n, and we'll output i. Otherwise, if it's not prime, we'll output percent d is not prime backslash n, and we'll output i here. And if we save and run this, it's going to check all the numbers between 2 and 1000. And we can see 2 is prime, 3 is prime, 4 is not prime, 5 is prime, 6 is not prime, 7 is prime, all the way down now to 1000. So we could check up until much higher numbers. But at this point, I think we'll leave it here. So this is how we can determine whether a number is prime or not using C. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.